Combo Fighter is a one-on-one -on -one card game with variants for one, three or four players that could only be more evocative of classic 90s fighting games if it actually turned you into a 16-bit sprite. For people like me, with fond memories of Street Fighter or Tekken, the premise is instantly exciting. Two fighters from different parts of the world have both bought a fist-class ticket on a bruise cruise heading to Pain Town. What does that mean? I don't know. The point is, the way you win is by throwing punches, chaining together combos, or just panicking and pressing buttons entirely at random. That's fine too. Combo Fighter is even almost as fast as a fighting game, cramming a series of nerve-wracking decisions into just 10 minutes of gameplay. But before that, you're going to have to choose a fighter, and who you can choose from depends on whether you bought the big box of four fighters, or one of the two standalone boxes with two fighters, like a little violence variety pack. Once players have each chosen their character and drawn their starting hand of five cards, you are each going to simultaneously pick one of those cards and reveal. All of Combo Fighter is played simultaneously and works on a rock, paper, scissors system. Red attack cards always beat yellow movement cards, which in turn always beat blue blocking cards, but blocking beats attacks. So like fighting video games, this is all about getting inside your opponent's head. If you both play the same color, one of three things happens. If you both play a block or a movement card, the round just ends as both fighters tense up, ready to counter a blow that never happens. If you both play an attack card, then who wins is decided by whose card has the faster printed speed. Wait, just st okay, stop there. Right. That's we're not, we're not doing, the, we're not actually going to hate each other. Ben, if you read your contract. Now, whichever player wins the round has the opportunity to pour pain onto their opponent by chaining cards into a combo. Jab, cross, close distance, knee. However, you have to have those cards in your hand. So like in fighting video games, you might have an opponent that counters you perfectly. You go, oh no, here comes the pain. And then nothing happens. In fact, you can probably append like fighting video games to just about every other sentence in this review. This game is an absolute love letter to the genre and the best fighting tabletop game that I personally have ever played, beating the hell out of the fascinating Battlecon or the deviant yet completely nuts real-time game Brawl. Combo Fighter doesn't use anything as clumsy as damage tokens or counters, and instead uses your deck to represent the ticks on your health meter. Meaning, if you take seven damage, you're going to be discarding seven cards. While taking damage is always going to be a bad thing, you can choose to first discard some cards from your hand, meaning you can get rid of a couple of the less useful ones for future rounds. This raises an interesting question, because sure, you can knock out a crazy five card combo, but those five cards then go in your discard pile, meaning your character's now five cards closer to being exhausted. So you might be sat there thinking, hang on, doesn't that just make Combo Fighter Rock, Paper, Scissors the game? In a yes, manner of speaking, yeah, is, yeah. yeah, basically. But also, no, no way, Jose, no, absolutely, completely not. different game. For starters, winning a round with an attack is just flat out better. So that's rock, paper, scissors, but rock is better. But also, every character you might pick is very different. Look, this is my favorite character, Renee Iza. But look, her deck is almost entirely attack cards and her signature combos all start with attack. These are special sequences of buttons that, if you press them in that exact order, rip off a huge chunk of health from your opponent. So you're playing with that in mind, but then also, of course, the character you're fighting will have a different deck as well, whether it's more scissors or more paper, or it's more paper, but they like playing more scissors. The point is that you can play Combo Fighter by thinking about all of this stuff and playing a tense game of bluffing and prediction or you can just use the revolutionary fighting strategy of hitting your opponent in the head until they fall over. But whatever you choose to do, the game is in figuring out how your opponent is playing so you can counter them. And it's also oddly cerebral. It's like if Inception took place at 2am on a Saturday night in an alleyway. They want to start with an attack, so you should play a block, but they know you want to play a block, so they'll play a move, so you should play an attack, 
but their attacks are faster, so then you should play a bluff. Okay, right, it's fine. And that's okay, because the core loop of Combo Fighter is just two players frowning, and then they reveal, and somebody feels incredibly clever while somebody else feels incredibly unlucky, or you both play the same cards, which for a game effect that does absolutely nothing, sure feels like the coolest thing in the world. Like you've just met your match. When does this end? Why don't you find out? So already, Combo Fighter has expertly condensed the contents of an entire arcade cabinet into a single shelf-friendly box. But where the game really shines is with its cast of characters. Each one feels like a modern spin on a 90s fighting game trope. You've got the slightly battered all-round martial artist, or the person who somehow got away with bringing a huge stick to the fight. If you pick Grace Lee, you start with this staff in your hand. Literally, it's in your starting hand. And whilst you've got it, it gives a damage boost to all your attacks. But as a special one-off, you can smash it over your opponent's heads for massive damage. But you lose the card whether the attack was successful or not. I'm not sure what the backstory is for the Norwegian fighter Snowstorm. My guess is he only recently found out that kickboxing is not in the Winter Olympics. But her kicks become more powerful the later in the combo you place them. So if you manage to evade, bounce, spin, kick, fast kick, you are officially floating like a butterfly and stinging like a horse. In fact, if you manage to pull off her zero damage switch stance combo, her power kicks then do triple damage. And again, just like in fighting video games, it's not just that individual characters are interesting, it's that they're interesting and then you're interested in how they'll fare against every other member of the cast. For example, will Snowstorm make me less afraid of fighting Gakere Bako? No. no. No, she won't. She really, she really, really, really won't. Gakere Bako is a ground fighter and the way this works is that out of the gate, Gakere is the worst fighter in the game. He takes extra damage whenever he gets hit. But if he can beat you with a wrestling card, then instantly, you're gonna flip over his little counter here, and Gakere becomes immune to all damage and unlocks a 25 damage chokehold. Gakere specifically goes beyond just being interesting to fight. He is actually terrifying, even when you're winning. All of these characters are brought to life without the painfully proportioned bodies that we're used to seeing in the genre. Snowstorm is a bit like Chun-Li, but with the legs of an actual human as opposed to a sexualized forklift truck. The only character that doesn't make sense to me is Brazilian Francisco Ferro, who looks like a financial services worker who got startled in the changing room. However, that's now my headcanon, making him, in a roundabout way, one of my favorite characters in the game. Combo Fighter does an effortless job at being family friendly, despite literally being a punching simulator. The art on the cards uses these colourful shockwaves and impacts which help communicate the motion of a combo in full flow. You genuinely feel like you can see these characters moving and chaining these moves together. One thing that really helps is the size of the cards. They're just that little bit bigger, which when compared to a normal sized card is nice. It's just nice. It's just good. I like it. What we found when we were playing Combo Fighter is that you don't even really mind when you're losing. Not only has your opponent beaten you in the initial clash of rock, paper, scissors, but they've also unleashed this dizzying combo of moves, which is just really cool to watch. It's like picking yourself up from the floor, battered and bruised, looking across to them and saying, well played but then you can just play again. Why not do a best of three to mitigate some of the randomness in Combo Fighter? Geez, in 45 minutes, you can play a best of five. And in doing so, this game is gonna develop an additional juicy layer of strategy like the skin on a rice pudding because you're gonna be watching your opponent and learning not just their character, but them. And why not mix up some of your own behavior, eh? Just as long as you don't play so weirdly that you also start playing 
badly. What Combo Fighter does really well is it takes one theme and runs with it until it's just a pixel in the distance. But whilst it has all the strengths of fighting games, it also has all the weaknesses. At times it can feel like you're awesome and you're really nailing things, but at the same time it can just be luck. You could get everything you throw at your opponent countered clumsily by them in the card game equivalent of button mashing. Now if this is an effort to capture the fiddly frustration of learning a whole different slew of button combinations from a fighting game, then yeah, that succeeds, but it just made me feel a bit stupid, like the designers were giving me something easy and I was failing. Be like your self-defense tutor asking you to learn martial arts by watching The Matrix five times. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Combo Fighter is affordable. It is expandable. It is entertaining. It lands its theme as squarely as an uppercut to the jaw. It's so much more exciting than this austere grey blue packaging makes it look. What else? I can teach it in about four minutes and from the very first turn, my friends are going to be losing themselves in this unsolvable puzzle. And yes, all right, yes, yes, you can lose just through random chance and bad luck, but it doesn't feel like a random game to me because there's so much information you're basing your decisions on. It feels like uh, gambling. It feels like risk reward. And besides, I don't mind if I lose because I just want to show it to people. And for me, the real fun is in making sound effects along, to com <laughs> along with combos. Look, lift up, squeeze, squeeze, squat, and then jumping on you. <laughs> That is, look, look, That's pretty good, does that not bring you joy? <laughs> but Quinns, as we all know, you are a natural warrior. It's true. I've been imagining what it's like to fight a human ever since I was small and growing up in a house that was itself on the streets. Right. If you don't like fighting games quite as much as we do, we'd recommend starting with one of the smaller boxes, like this one, which is $15, you get two fighters in. If you like it, you can get more of it. Start with the, get the big box then, move on to the other stuff. You can build it up. I see what you're saying. You're saying get your feet wet with a little box, and then if you like the depth, you can take the plunge in the big box, and then you're in some real hot water. That is, that is what I'm saying, just less watery. Yeah. Yeah. What? That's How rubbish. dare you? Do you want to take this outside? Do you want to take this outside? Let's take this outside! Come on! This was a terrible idea. This was a terrible idea. Yeah, alright. If you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one card game and you don't think Combo Fighter is good for you, hey, why not play Jiper or Lost Cities? or Air, Land and Sea, which is new and exciting. If you want something bigger and collectible, Summoner Wars is still really good. And if you want something even bigger and b even more collectible, that is still just one-on-one, -on -one, Mage Wars is excellently stupid. Can I have my second ice? You've been eating it. I, I thought it was mine. Why would I give me my second?